For many years since the burst stone was added, no one really cared for it, and no one could blame you, as it was an old, outdated weapon that could never really keep up with the newly added weapons as the game progressed. But, with the addition of a Karnon adapters from Duvir Experience, it goes from nothing to something worth using. Let's begin today with how the burst on Prime will handle without any mods equipped, and we will start that with a couple of free shots. The Incarnate Burst Song will depend heavily on how you build it, but today I will have two builds for you, so you can either go with the more uh, late game focus build or the more early game focus, which will still be useful on the Incarnate or the normal Burst On. You'll obviously go for headshots to level up the Incarnate's uh, meter, and you can activate this meter at any point in time. This does scale with multi-shot, and you can see, once I hit my secondary fire button, the weapon gains a peculiar little swirl on the side. With the Incarnon active now, as you can tell, it's full auto and does heat damage. Innate heat damage, which explodes in a radial effect of about 2 meters, but as you can see as I keep going a little further out, it's applying at about 6 meters or more. With the Incarnon active, you get much higher crit chance, crit multiplier, and fire rate, but you get an overall decrease in your base damage. But even with that decrease, you do get a bit of reduced zoom. So, as you can see, there are a couple of upsides compared to the normal. As you can see, we zoom back in, activate the Incarnon at any point, lose a bit of damage, but we zoom out and get more crit, crit chance, crit multiplier, and heat. Now, with that covered, Let's go over the Incarnon Evolutions. Now, let's begin with covering the Incarnons. So, your first evolution lets you unlock it. So, next up we have your Evolution 2. With Evolution 2, you unlock Fortress Salvo and Forceful Finality. Despite both having plus 42 damage, we will be going with Fortress Salvo. Because with Forceful Finality, the plus 5 multi-shot on Final Magazine Burst only applies to the base form and not the Incarnon. Additionally, the plus uh, 2 punch through for any frame over 450 is quite nice to have. Next up in Evolution 3, you get 3 choices. That being Extended Volley, Ready Retaliation, and Kinetic Battle. Now, when it comes to these, it's a dealer's choice for usability, since each of them are quite nice to have. Kinetic Battle gives you plus, uh, not plus, sorry, minus 50% weapon recoil, which lets it be a laser beam, and to me is the best in slot, and most useful of the three. Next up is Ready Retaliation, which gives on reload from empty, plus 100% reload speed. This does apply to swapping from normal Incarnon to, no uh, to the Incarnon, sorry, and back, vice versa. It just makes it a little bit faster. And finally, we end with Extended Volley, which increases your magazine from 45 to 66. But sadly, this does not apply to the Incarnon. But granted, with a full charge on the Incarnon, you get 600 bullets. But we'll be going with Kinetic Battle for today's build. Finally, with Evolution 4, we have three options. Reaver's Rapture, Absolute Valor, and a Fatal Affliction. Reaver's Rapture gives plus 20% damage on the full burst hit. This resets on reload, and to me is not that good, because as soon as you miss a full burst hit, you lost down the damage, and you're going to eventually have to reload very soon. Next up we have Absolute Valor, which gives plus 22% critical chance. Now, the base for this is quite nice, so it's a very good personal favorite of mine. Then finally, we have Fatal Affliction, which gives plus 40% direct damage per status type affecting the target. Now, this is similar to Conditional Overload, eh, but it, you can compare it to Galvanized Aptitude, but without the status chance. It certainly won't apply to Radial Attacks since it's such a small range and what? You're going to be dealing Heat? Viral? It's, it's not that much of an increase that you're going to be getting from it. So we'll be going with the best in slot being. Absolute Valor, because, as you see, you go from 18 to 40%, to which is a powerful increase. Next up, let's go over the builds. We have a starter build and a build with a ribbon. Now, with my builds that I have, I'm giving you one with a ribbon and one without a ribbon. The non-ribbon one can still apply to just using the normal burst on. The only difference is you may not have Galvanized Chamber if you're new. 
to playing the game or haven't gotten it since coming back. Until you get it, you could easily replace this with Split Chamber, and it would still be just fine. Same thing with the Arcane. You don't need the Arcane. It is a beneficial thing purely if you have it. I will be showing it off both with Merciless and Deadhead. So, we're first going to show off the Viral Slash build with Crit, with Hunting Munitions specifically. With 120% crit chance, thanks to Critical Delay, which, in my opinion, is better is a better option than using Point Strike. Because, if you add Point Strike to it... Uh, let me take that off. I'll just do it here. You only get to 100. Still useful, still very useful, but I like the extra 120 just so you can get a higher form of crit. Battle sense for the crit damage, shred so you can punch through, and a little bit of fire rate. I would put Prime Shred on if I had it. Same thing with Prime Cryo Rounds. I have Prime Cryo Rounds, but your boy doesn't want to form it anymore. Now, let's give it a test. How does it... How does it apply? Well, as you can tell, quite well. Thanks to the punch through, you're going to the enemies behind them, hitting them with more slash, more viral, dealing just as much damage as you would if you had shot them directly. Now, our Incarnon's active. Let's see how it performs. Now we have Heat, we have Viral, we will have Slash thanks to Hunter Munitions. Let's see how it happens. Couple shots to their head, and boom goes the dynamite. Just shreds through them like they're made of butter. Now, that's with Primary Merciless on. Let's see what happens if, say, you didn't have a Max Primary Merciless. Let's see what happens if you used Deadhead. Which wants you to hit crits. Not crits, sorry. Headshots. So, let's get our headshot kill. Let's try not to kill the guy behind them. There you go. Now we pop our Incarnon. Still does very, very well. But, since this weapon does do radial damage, I recommend you would stick with Primary Merciless. And even if you don't have Primary Merciless, or Deadhead, let's take it off and let's kill some enemies. As you can see, still very, very strong. The Arcane is just, like I said, a little bit of a beneficial bonus. Same thing with the Incarnon still shreds through them like butter. Now, I did say there would be two options. The second option for this build would obviously be, you like Viral Heat thanks to the Incarnon, but what about armored enemies? Granted, Slash just ignores it, but say you were dealing with other enemies that you don't want to use Viral, maybe they resist it. It still would help, but I like my Corrosive builds. So, take off therm uh, not thermite rounds, take off rhyme rounds, put on high voltage. Alternatively, you could use uh, Stormbringer, obviously, but we're not doing that today. We're adding more status effects. So, how does that apply? Well, still melts them like butter. Like they do not exist. They are not a part of the problem. Easy, right? Now you may be saying, oh, but you're on Hydroid. He benefits from Corrosive. Okay. Let's put on my Umbra. Let's re-simulate the enemies. Umbra gets no benefits from dealing Corrosive damage. Wow, look at that. Still just melts through them like butter. They don't exist. Even he's dead. I barely even hit him. Activate the Incarnon. Buttery smooth. Now, since Roar is more of a faction-based mod, say you put a faction mod on here. Obviously, there is a bit of a damage increase, but still. If you didn't like all the mods on it, you could put on a faction mod. But, next up, we have the Riven mod. Now, next up, we have my build with a Riven so, with my Riven, as you can see, it's roughly the same type of build, except I've been using Corrosive, I have higher Crit Multiplier, but no Puncture. I still run Galvanized Chamber, Hunter Munitions, Shred, Vital Sense, all about the same mods. But now there's a Riven. Here we, did, here we had Serration, here we don't have Serration. My Riven, obviously, not even close to the best. Pretty bad, in my opinion. 
but you get damage, ammo max, and crit damage with a good negative. Less puncture, meaning you have time for the other uh, other stats to apply, like your slash. So, you have primary merciless. No need for the exless, but if you wanted an exless, you could obviously use like vigilante supplies. Uh, to be honest, I don't, I don't think there's really that many other options you could really use. I don't recommend Vile Precision because you get less fire rate, and the only way to fix that really would be a Prime Shred. But let's see what we do with a Riven. We have to respawn the enemies. Sad. So, here we go. This is a Corrosive build with the Riven on. As you can see, as I miss, still very, very strong. Just melts through the enemies like they're made of butter. Just, just perfect. Now, say I didn't want to use Corrosive. Let's swap it to Viral, obviously. You need both sides of the coin. Swap over here, go find my Rhyme Rounds, take off high voltage. Now we have Viral Slash. How's it, how does it perform? <laughs> As you can see, still very, very well. I'm also getting Fortress Salvo due to having higher than 450 armor. As you can see, I'm punched through everyone. Somehow I missed him. But how does it apply with the Incarnon? Let's see. Still buttery smooth. Just melts through them with absolute ease. And once again, let's just show it off. You have a faction mod with a little bit more damage. Nope, there they go. Oops, oh, there they go. Oops, there they go. Now, you may be saying, oh, all, you do, all you're doing is fighting Grenier, uh, Grenier. That's all you've been fighting. Okay. Let's summon some random corpus enemies. I ain't got that many, because I don't scan enough. Uh, let's spawn some X in my units. Sure. Now, what in the hell? Why am I so slow? Let's unproc our Incarnon. And once again, we are using Viral Slash. Turn on the Incarnon, and if I could aim my shots, there they go. There they go. As you can see, he'll die even though I didn't fully hit him. There they go. And once again, so you had a faction on a bit of a damage boost. There they go, and there they go. It just melts them like they do not exist. Finally, how about some infested? Get rid of the Corpus Tech Xmas. How about some infested? Who do we spawn? Who do y'all want to see die? I really should scan more things. I don't scan enough. Let's do some ancient healers. Why not? Can't really think of anything else. Now, once again, viral. Viral heat is what we're using. Turn off the Incarnon. Get my buff to go away. Just buttery smooth. There they go. There they go. There they go. And there they go. Nothing can stand in its way. Now, how about... Let's just fully show it off. Let's do Hydroid with his bonus. I'm running Viral. Let's swap that over to Corrosive. My brain suddenly didn't know what... <laughs> I didn't know what I was looking for suddenly. Swap that over to Corrosive. And let's get the full benefit. Because most of the time, what I'm fighting is indeed Grenier, Corrupted, etc. Drop a couple of those, add some corrupted heavy goons. Now, obviously, the AI is never sitting still. So, get the Incarnon active. Let's do what I like doing, which is proc that as I get knocked on my ass. Get my bonus from it, and let's see how they handle this. They just... They just... They just... They just melt. They just melt. That's all. That's all that happens. They just get melted. But, once again, the AI is never paused. Let's go to Still Path. Let's go see how this performs out in the wild. 
and here we are in the void. Now, because I want y'all to believe that this is bog standard, all I got is my Smedic of that, no stacks, the burst on, my Octopor, and my hate, but I'm only going to use the burst on. So, here we go. No stacks, no nothing. We're here running my Corrosive build I really like running. Absolute ease. Now, obviously, it is still path. Bring whatever frame you prefer to bring. Even an, an enemy with armor couldn't stand it. But I'm going to bring my Hydroid. Corrupted Heavy Goon. Another random enemy. Just absolutely butter smooth. Activate the Incarnon. Nothing. There he is. Nothing. Nothing. Obviously, let's not just sit around. Let's go find our capture target. Nothing stands in my way. I haven't even activated Plunder yet to get my bonuses. Let's activate that real quick. Not that much, but it's still going to help you. Got an Argon. Look at that. Even the game understands my power. It's trying to bribe me to leave. just melts through them like they don't even exist. Let's get that capture target. Where is he? There he is. Wow. And there he went. Already. Pop my tentacles to make sure I can capture him for no downside at all. But let's show off something else. As you saw, my Kavat just gave me critical charm. Well, even that x unit couldn't stand it. He couldn't stand it. He couldn't stand it. He couldn't stand it. Literally nothing can fight back. And I don't even have my buff. Let's turn on a little bit of my plunder. Just keep shredding through them. Nothing stands in my way. Now what else could I show y'all? What else could I show y'all? I know. An Acolyte. Let's wait to see for whenever the Acolyte starts to come in. And when the Acolyte comes in... Let's see how fast he can get shredded. Ooh, flashy, flashy. We got a guy to kill. Ooh, angst too. Oh, let's keep the enemies off of us. Hello, angst. Come over here. Look at that. I only shot him a couple times and they're already just falling. And there they go. Even with the leaf light check, uh, leaf Leech Eximus. I'm having a stroke. Life Leech Eximus right beside them. They still could not withstand that. It took a good five minutes for that one Acolyte to spawn. But as you can see, even though it is not obviously the most optimal weapon, the best weapon to use, it is a fun weapon. It's like having a mini, like, flamethrower almost, purely because it just shoots so fast and you're dealing innate heat damage. It's just a lot of fun to use. And, while I was here, I got another Argon. The game really is trying to pay me to leave, so I stopped tormenting these guys. Well, let's get out of here, and I'll give you my final thoughts on the Burst on Prime card on. Now, before I give you my final thoughts, why not a frame that buffs weapons? Why not the lovely Mirage? I swear I have her. She gives, obviously, a nice damage boost with her Hall of Mirrors and Eclipse. Granted, once again... From the previous video. I've forgotten to kind of upgrade her. <laughs> I have entirely forgotten to do it. I was meant to. I was supposed to. But did I? Not. Not really. But we can still show off what happens when you pop Hall of Mirrors and Eclipse with the uh, with just bog standard. It's positive AI so you don't have to deal with them moving. But once again they would be moving in an actual sense. Get some energy. Pop Hall of Mirrors, Pop Eclipse, and... Well... What is there to say? Pop the Incarnon, just... <laughs> Was there an enemy there? Was there really enemies there? We would never know. But when it comes to my final thoughts on the Burst On, it is a very, very strong weapon. It is useful for almost everyone. It can kill anything you need, from Infested to Orican to Grenier to Corpus. 
even sentience. Would I bring it on a uh, three by six or six by three? I forgot the mixture. No, obviously not. You'd see me bring. Where is it? <laughs> my Vectus Prime. There it is. I found it. I'm like, I level you up. I'd bring my Vectus Prime or something similar. Is it better than XYZ uh, AOE weapon? No. It's a single fire, very strong weapon. If you wanted AOE, be like most people, bring the Ignis Raid. You want high random crit? Not a Rooker. Some other high crit weapon. You want a shotgun, Strun Prime, yep, a con. Uh, Tenant, Archiplasmor. Either way, you would bring something else for each individual thing you like. But the Burst On is a very strong single target weapon with a neat little gimmick of just burning whatever it sees. It's fun. It's very useful. I enjoy it. And I too hope that y'all will enjoy the weapon just as much as I do. Because who doesn't love just doing this? Just watching the whole room just clear out. But look at that. So easy. Who doesn't find that unbelievably enjoyable? It's just so easy. So, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. You guys can always catch me on Twitter, Twitch, and Discord. I hope you guys have a great day. Peace out, guys. See you later. Hey, psst. as a little side note before the video ends, if you guys really enjoy this content, tell me other weapons you want to see me uh, do Incarnon reviews on it in the comments below. More than likely, the next one may be Lex or Soma Prime. But if you want to see more content, hit that like and subscribe, and don't forget to turn on the bell notification. Peace out, guys.